Uh, Liquor.com uh, sort of speaks for itself in terms of what it does. It's really um, obvious. But, but fourth deal for you guys this year, uh, but but very disparate kinds of deals in some some bridal stuff, uh, some health stuff, and you now obviously some stuff in the liquor space. Yeah. What exactly are you trying to build? So we are um, we're a service journalism company. We're a service publisher, and we do it in a bunch of areas: health and wellness, finance, lifestyle, meaning like home, food, travel, and uh, beauty and style. So what we're looking for, and we're out actively looking for, are properties and brands that fit that model. So liquor.com for us fits perfectly into our lifestyle mix. It fits really well with a brand we have called My Domain, which is a very millennial-focused entertaining business, and something called The Spruce, which is a big home site and food site. And what's the end game here for, for the company? Because it's, it, clearly you guys are in build mode. Uh, IAC, the parent company, has a track record of finding a, a, a plan that works, building it to a scale, and then exiting. So what, where, where does this go? So, uh, so IAC, we've talked about this, IAC doesn't really exit. They usually will get you independent at some point. I don't know when that'll be. That's not really on the radar for us. What we're trying to do is we're trying to scale something. And we have a business in publishing that's unique today. Like, we're growing rapidly, 20% top line growth this year. We'll do 150 plus in revenue. We'll do, IC's told Wall Street, we'll do more than $40 million in EBITDA. We're profitable, it makes us unique. And gives us advantages that we can go out and buy things to scale. So we have this model of service publishing where we just make really great content on really fast sites. We have fewer ads than other people. Consumers are really responding to it, and it's working. Fewer ads, but you do nonetheless have a good window into the advertising market and you know no subscriptions here, so it's all advertising revenue. How is that performing at the moment, and, and where are you seeing the, the sort of the growth and indeed the declines in advertising? So advertising, there's, there's a lot going on in advertising, particularly online. The market's a little choppy. I think if you have good assets that actually perform in advertising online, it's quite measurable, you'll do well. And we're doing quite well because we have those assets. What you're seeing something which is a little bit of nuanced is the way that advertisers track people around the internet are these things called cookies. So you go to a site and you build a profile of a person based on a cookie. Cookies are going away because of all kinds of privacy concerns. And that's made it harder for some publishers to monetize, guys who are more general content. And it's made it harder for advertisers to find people. We don't have that problem because we're very intent driven specific content on a topic. Like, if you're getting married and you are a bride, we literally own brides.com, so it's very easy for an advertiser to find brides. And um, intent-driven content, sort of very specific topics, very service journalism, um, that part of the market is doing quite well now. Uh, you talked about the IPO or possible IPO as being something that is not necessarily in your focus at the moment, indeed not in your control because it will be for IAC to decide to some extent. Uh, looking at the public markets at the moment, does it look particularly appealing to become a, no, a company going through that process? No, no, the last thing I want to do right now is run a public company. It seems particularly unfun. Uh, but what, what I would say is for us, people go public because they need capital. They need currency for M&A. They need a way to compensate people. We don't need any of those things. We have them all as part of IAC. And what IAC has been great at historically is incubating businesses. And when they get to a proper scale that they feel like you're better off sort of outside the nest, they get you outside the nest somehow or another. And if that's an outcome for us, great. We're pretty happy sticking around IAC as long as possible. But what is it about the market at the moment that seems to be this, this dislocation between what companies think they are and how the market is perceiving, and particularly tech companies, particularly, and this relates to what you guys do, consumer tech companies? I don't know. I think we're a consumer tech company, but we're a media business. And I think the, the team that runs Dot Dash, we're, we're kind of students of media. And media historically trades on one thing, your ability to make money, or how much EBITDA you can make. I, and that gets a multiple in a range, a trading multiple. We're, we're very happy delivering EBITDA and being valid on a multiple. I think there are a lot of businesses out there that look like old line businesses that are like just like bought a new coat of technology and they're trying to get a whole different multiple for something that probably doesn't deserve it. And I think that's what you're seeing. Okay, last question. You've done four acquisitions, as we said, this year. That leaves plenty of time for at least one more before we get to the end of 2019. What's next on the horizon? We're trying. I think in, in publishing in particular, it is very hard to be a subscale publisher. Like, in order to be a publisher successful on the internet today, you need huge data capabilities, huge advertising capabilities, big content production capabilities. Um, we have all those things. A lot of really well-known brands don't, and we're going to opportunistically, hopefully, add them to what we're doing.